up this orchid. Paphiopedalum rose to dawn. Hybrid cross. Not a lost, uh, no, not lost. One and a half years ago at the um, orchid show in Lund, I reported it with a little bit more um, crushed seashells uh, this time. Oh, yeah. Other than that, it's uh, simple bark and a little bit of charcoal in the mixture. Gets watered, dip watered about once a week. I mean, look. Last time she flowered, came out with yeah, two single flowers, I think. Uh, she blooms once or twice a year, at least. Either a smaller flower with a sequential one to come, or a single flower with no sequential one to come. Uh, that's my reflection on her this far, but uh, after having reported her, she's got a little bit more stored energy to uh, really perform to the maximum, as you can see. It's a very, very healthy plant, a bit more to leaf set, quite nice looking, mm -hmm. nice green colour to the leaves, and here, yeah, a slight scent rosy lemony scent so um yeah and that's a very good grower i hope we're going to be able to keep her for many years to come now it's 25 days later since the two the first two ones opened yes i would say that the sequential ones they have been increasing in size lately that's the last couple of days actually but i think 25 days is not bad and these fellows will have yet one, two more weeks. And when these two guys are out of the way, more energy will go into these new flowers. And this is a hybrid cross. I don't even think, no, it's not a primary. It's a hybrid cross between Paphiopedalum astarte and Paphiopedalum gwenhanon. Yes. So not only is she scented, lovely scented, sequential and long lasting, she's uh, even very, very adorable to look at. It's a gorgeous display she's uh, putting out there. So I was really, really lucky to uh, obtain this good representative of an orchid. Yes. Highly recommended. This one was from Kargi in Germany, but I think they uh, shut down the business now, so... But there are others. And we've got the other one, uh, White Lady, Paphiopedalum White Lady, with similar flowers, almost identical flowers, to be honest, and foliage as well, so... Yeah, that's a substitute for this one, if you cannot find exactly this one. The other one is so, so, so very similar, so grab that one if you get the chance as well. Look, 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 look. This is really path and frag season, isn't it? The Philippinensi. Yeah. The species. Yes. Its petals are still growing longer and longer. And they're getting more curled. Yes. A little bit more twisted. For each day. So she's been open for quite, yeah, three days. I uh, thought I waited for the other ones as well. Whoa, I think this one is damaged. Shit. Well, I had regular luck. <laughs> anyway, we still got two more to come. Such a beauty. So the gorgeous Philippinensi, the species, has now been open for 24 days. Yeah, that one was 25. Now, 24 days. This is the first bloom to open up. No sign of declining. It's not going over by any means. I really do love the twisted petals. They're better twisted than the other one there, the Robellini. Or Robellini. Not sure. <laughs> 
so very long lasting. And here's the, uh, the funny one. I happen to, uh, of course I did with all my bad luck uh, lately, I happen to uh, knock this one over, the sail. But it's been clinging on, it's been holding on to this sail for very long, until now. But the flower itself didn't crumble up or anything, it's just, yeah, you could live without a sail. <laughs> Looking quite hooded now. Doesn't it? After all of this time, there's still yet another one to come. So, a long time blooming indeed for this Filipinense. I don't recall the uh, Rubellini, uh, the one I cannot really determine the difference between this and this one, except for the spike now <laughs> breaking after one year. Yeah? But anyway, no sign of any anything down there. This orchid, this season. But yeah. But, but what's the difference? I thought about the pouch. The pouch would be a bit larger. Maybe the bloom itself was a bit larger, but I'm not really sure. I think the variant size. I think this pouch is a bit larger than this pouch. And maybe the Robellini was a bit more... Um, not so many veins to... I'm not sure, to the pouch perhaps, or perhaps a little bit more orange -ish. Or maybe the background colour to the strikes on the sail was a bit more brownish. I, it's very difficult to say one year later, when all I got uh, is really a couple of bad pictures of it. You can see for yourself, but, um, well, tell me what you think in the comment section below. What's the difference between the Robellini, Philip Lenzi Robellini, and the regular form, the species, Philippinensi. And we do have another one, which I do believe is gonna bloom before long. It's the season, January to, yeah, March, the path version of Black Wings. It's creating something down there, something a little black, a little something black down there. Might be a beginning of a bud. This will turn out somewhat black. I can imagine that this guy <laughs> is going to create yet another leaf down there. I mean, it's finished growing, this growth, and it hasn't bloomed yet. So maybe, or maybe not. But still, one and two new growth there for the future. My Paphiopedalum callosum, a uh, Paphiopedalum species from Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, that area, is now in bloom for the very first time. Yeah, it belongs to the model leafed Cadbury. Very nice leaf suit. Another new growth. On his way already. Around seven centimeters across the petals. Special with a black hairy dot to him. Yeah. It's very significant for this orchid. Uh, should bloom according to the care guides in um, spring summer. <laughs> So it differs a lot and uh, should start on its next growth long after it finished its blooming for the next season, which should be the summer. So it's not really according to the care guide's plan, <laughs> is it? I uh, cannot feel an scent to it, but it's a lovely, lovely orchid to have. Quite easy grower in a moss charcoal bark and perlite and a bit of uh, seashells to rise the pH a bit, just a teeny weeny bit, not much. So, beautiful sail, isn't it? And it's also said that it needs a um, dry rest in order for it to um, induce flowering and buds. But, well, I don't really think it's uh, true. <laughs> it is blooming, isn't it? Yeah. 
Good thing to have in your collection. Lovely path. Medium sized one. For now. Let's move over here. Beautiful. This is not a path, but still it's a slipper orchid. <laughs> the Vesna Super Grandi Fragmipedium. The second flower. Yeah, the first bloom open up on the 16th of January. So this bloom has been out for 25 days. And this for only uh, 10 days or so. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But as you can see, there's still yet another one to come. So, yeah. And this long, beautiful petals. I wish they would have been curled as as for the uh, Philippinensi path. But, well, there are curly petaled frags as well up there, I believe. It's just that I, I don't think I have any. <laughs> and maybe in the future. Well, there will be an update on this orchid, perhaps, when its third bud has opened up. Uh, and hopefully... The first flower won't have um, have 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 uh, dropped by then. Yeah. Okay, that would be the video. And you guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and that you also love path your petals just as much as I do. Yeah. You need to just yeah. You just need to find the very right conditions for them to grow nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Take care, and we should talk soon. Bye bye. Thanks for watching this video.